Hello again, Fishalots, and welcome to another edition of Fishing with Johnny Fishalot. Today, I'm excited to bring you some video footage of a trip I had in my kayak for flounder in the back bay. Now, I want to share with you a couple of lessons learned I had on this trip and some mistakes that I made that I feel cost me some fish and some fishing time, to be honest with you. So stick around to the end of the video, and I'll show you exactly how to learn from my mistakes so you can maximize your time out on the water. All right, guys, let's get straight into it. So you're looking at the chart here and you're saying to yourself, all right, well, where do I start to look for places to fish? So here's the spots that I was really looking at at the beginning of the trip. And these are these choke point areas close to the inlet. So here's a bridge coming into the island right here. Um, it's not on this on this PowerPoint presentation. It's not on the screenshot, but this is the inlet somewhere down here. And of course, this is the Atlantic Ocean. So I wanted to fish closer to the inlet for colder water, faster flowing water. And in the beginning of the trip, I was doing all right. And then of course the boats came and I had a pivot. So this is uh, a couple of areas in the back bay that I had as a backup plan. So you can see there's another choke point on an outgoing tide. There's another inlet up here. Again, this is the Atlantic Ocean. So um, as a backup plan, I was gonna try to focus my attention on these two areas over here. This is very shallow creeks but with a couple of deep holes. So there's a deep hole there, and there's a deep hole there. And that essentially was my plan. Those are my spots one through four. I'll show you a little bit more detail on the next slide. And these were my spots five, and we'll call this spot six. Fishing lots, let's take this out to the water so you can see off on my right side, the starboard side, you can see that beautiful sunset. And it's actually quite peaceful out at this moment. There's not a lot of boat traffic and it's nice and I'm enjoying myself and I'm actually going to be able to pick off a few fish here before all the boats end up coming out. And right here is going to be my first fish of the day without the boats. There you go. Wow. Look at this. That is a baby, baby flounder. All right. Right, so I just drew that arrow there just to indicate where the rip line is. That will actually be my next spot once I catch this next fish that I'm about to show you. So you could also hear that wind really starting to pick up and that wind unfortunately will be blowing the whole rest of the day. So I catch a fish here and then I'll go ahead and head across the channel to that rip line and then I'll get another one. You see here, as soon as I get across the, the channel into that rip line, there you go. that's what happens. Oh, a little. Wow, that little fish took this big. Wow. They are aggressive. All right, guys, this is more or less the same picture. It's just illustrating the contour lines. Again, here's your contour lines coming out of the secondary channel. This is nine feet right here. And, and the, the depth varies. Uh, this was 10 feet to 20 feet in this hole. But you have the line coming out. You have the tide coming out. It's going to meet this main channel. And here's the point. Same thing here. Here's the point sticking out into the main channel. And fish on the outgoing tide were laying right in this area where you had an eddy. So anything, any type of tide changes, upwellings, rip lines, eddies created from these channels, those are perfect places to fish for flounder. And that's exactly what I did. And these are some of the fish I caught while fishing in that area. So in this segment of the video, I just wanted to show my expert camera and audio skills. I am actually fishing here. So thank goodness the camera pans up and you could actually see the rod and me jigging the rod. So yeah, let's go ahead and see that in instant replay. Yeah, there you go. I just didn't want anybody getting the wrong idea when I include certain video like this. So, yeah, I just thought I'd have some fun with that one. 
and this is what I was just talking about. So this is the other side of the channel where I had to move my drift. And that's the reason why that gentleman in a boat saw me catch a few fish and then decided to anchor right at the bottom of my drift. So as I was positioning myself or repositioning myself, I found him anchored. So I just crossed the channel. But thanks to that gentleman, I am moving spots, as I said before, and I just wanted to show you, you can see that white water on the port side of the boat, that's my left side, that's where I want to fish, that's the rip line being caused by that depth change that I showed you in the PowerPoint, combined with the current and fast moving water. So I'm going to get on top of that, that structure, and I'm going to drift it all the way down with the current. All right, so now I'm just starting to get uh, going with my drift here. I'm all set up. I'm going to start to jig to jig here momentarily when I'm going to spot a boat. And right there. Okay, now I see the boat coming. I'm like, all right, he's going to have enough common sense to, to give me enough space where I don't have to break my drift here. I will drift all of maybe 15, 16 seconds. Oh, and here I go. Now I'm going to have to... Now I realize this guy's going to cut literally right next to me. And I'm going to have to break my drift just so I don't get mushed by all these waves coming. And there you go. So now I'm out of my drift. That's me annoyed. That's me mumbling to myself. And now I'm going to have to... Now I'm going to have to reset up. You can see now I'm out of position. I'm in the wind. The drift isn't going to be just right. And right behind me there, of course, is the gentleman that, that pushed me off my original drift. And then, of course, uh, now that the bite has been officially killed by a number of boats, you have to entertain yourself somehow, and so I'm singing to myself. There you go, guys. Enjoy. As you'll see here, the hits will just keep on coming with the boat traffic in this area. You can see that rip line. That's where I want to fish. Um, this guy... This guy off to the starboard side, he at least gave me the decency to slow down. He didn't buzz me while seeing I was fishing in a kayak. But nevertheless, it's starting to get a little bit busy and the boat traffic is going to inevitably kill the bite. All right, it's getting head on a swivel time, as you could tell. I'm, I'm looking behind me, I'm looking all around. I'm laughing at myself at this point because the boat traffic is just one after the other. And these boats here, at this point in the morning, are not slowing down for anything. They're just full throttle. There you go, there's another one. Just a guy in a kayak. No reason to slow down. These boats are actually a lot closer than what the GoPro and the fish cam are showing you. And probably the best of the bunch. This guy was the closest and was going the fastest and was literally a couple of humans in boats that were trying to kill me. Best part about it though is when they do do it, they wave at you as they try to capsize you. And you can tell I'm not very happy. I gotta, that's yeah, me, I'm right in the waves and that's me kind of mumbling to myself. So onward and forward. All right, guys, so now after having to abandon that spot that I was just showing you due to the just the insane amount of boat traffic and people trying to kill me in my kayak, humans in boats trying to kill humans in kayaks, I abandoned that spot and I w went up into the bay, further along into the bay. And that's this spot right here, this five, this five spot, and again, this six spot. So I was fishing in this area here. I fished here. The bite absolutely died, so then I had to take the long haul all the way across the bay against the current in this particular instance and the wind and make my way all the way to spot five and again, spot six right up here. Now getting back to this spot, let me, let me break it down in a little more detail. So you have this tertiary channel right here and up here is like a small little creek and bay. So this water on an outgoing tide is going to rush out this way and water on an outgoing tide is going to rush this way up towards that northern inlet that I was talking about earlier. So what I was able to do was I was able to start my drift here and cross that rip line as water came out of here and met with the water running to, towards the inlet right here. This was causing a rips right in this drop off 
and I was able to fish this deep hole as well. So this hole right about here was about 30 feet, and it comes up to 12 feet, 10, and all the way up, sorry about that, and all the way up till about three feet of water. So now it's really starting to rain. The wind is still howling. So yeah, I know I'm fishing in a kayak, but a quick pro tip is it's always a great idea to bring a dry bag, bring some extra clothes. In this case, I have a neoprene hoodie and some and some neoprene boots. So I'll be switching over to those to stay a lot more dry than what I currently am. Well, there we go. Fish on right there. All right. There we go. Whoa, foul hooked him. I don't like doing that, guys. Little flounder. Well, oh. okay, only skin hooked him, that's good. So he just took a swipe at the bucktail, skin hooked him, he should be all right. Let's grab him up here. Fish has had a better day. All right. Just in the tip of the ribbon. Take a look at that. A little flounder, another one. I caught a, uh, a nice one, but I don't, I don't know if I got it on film. Now just take a look. That's the size of the bait we're using, and that's the flounder that hit it. So that bait, that bait, is that big in comparison to the flounder that is amazing these fish are tremendously aggressive yeah the camera the gopro basically died on me as i was going to flip up this this next fish here I'll just drop off. here we go oh there we go fortunately i was able to get the gopro back up and running for this next clip this basically summarizes this trip perfectly now that's a great spot to fish if you're in a kayak and you have this busy traffic areas because boats are not supposed to be waking you and it's great if of course they don't wake you this guy is absolutely going to wake me because it's summer <laughs> there you go no wake zone there's the boat in a no wake zone <laughs> you gotta love it well all right fish lots we're at the end of the video and at this point i would like to share with you four things i learned from this trip that i think you guys could take away from this video to save you more time on the water and to help you catch more fish so let's get into it lesson number one avoid holiday summer weekends if you can Avoid summer weekends altogether if you can. These are times of heaviest boating traffic and the heaviest fishing pressure, and you're more likely to run into a bite that just dies off once the boat traffic becomes high. That's exactly what happened in this video. As soon as the boat started going, the fish stopped biting. So again, try to fish around those days. Try and fish a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday if you can. Times in the week where boating pressure will be less. Now, many of us work. I myself work, I was fishing on a weekend, so if you are forced to fish during a weekend, try and pick more remote places that boats can't get to and fishing pressure will be less. Do this one trick and you'll be likely to get on a hot bite more so than fishing in heavy boat, heavy boat traffic areas. Lesson number two, have three to five spots identified. This way when you head out and let's say the bite is off, or a boat is in your spot, you have a couple of different backup plans. I had a pivot more than a few times during this trip, and it really helped me to produce fish at a time where I honestly didn't see a single other boat catch a fish this day. And there were a lot of boats out there. Number three, I was in a kayak. I love fishing in my kayak, but it's not very fast. So when you do your pre-trip planning, Pick those three to five spots in very close proximity to each other. This way, if a boat's in your spot or whatever happens and you do have to move spots, you can move spots very quickly and you don't waste a whole lot of time driving to your next spot. As I explained earlier in the video, I ended up having to cross the whole channel and I wasted a lot of time moving from spot to spot. Rather, if I just picked three to five locations in close proximity away from those boats at the very beginning of my trip, I would have much more fishing time by the end of the day. 
And lesson number four is have fun, but be safe. Watch out for those humans and boats that are going to try to kill those humans in kayaks. Um, at one point, I was fishing in the channel, and it became a safety issue. Boats were, were zooming by back and forth, and it was just time to get out of there and fish safely further away from boats in a little bit more remote locations. So, okay, guys, that's it. I hope you learned something from this video. Please leave me a comment in the, in the comments below. And, of course, if you like the content and you like what you see, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post new content. And, of course, I'll have a list of all the equipment, rods, reels, cameras, all, all that stuff in the description below in case you guys want to take a look. Well, all right, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.